Good morning everyone, I am Mark Aldwin A. Coben and today I am going to tell you a story about the visitation of the gods. The story is about the visitation of the superintendent, the district supervisors and the division supervisors for the purposes of inspection and evaluation to the public schools, especially the Pugadlawin School. The said event, which was described in the story as a barring typhoons, floods, volcanic eruptions, and other acts of God means that the school must prepare itself, making all the necessary cleaning, repairing, beautifying, and even the faking of a good educational system. The principal of the school, Mr. Olbes, was very desperate to impress the superintendent and the supervisor that he even asked for the school facilities which are supposed to be used but kept unused to preserve from this event to be used and even borrowed the bougainvillea plants from the neighboring house just for the visitation. One of the supervisors said that some class had been so well rehearsed that they were reciting like machine guns. It's like they have some sort of a code, like if the student knows the answer, he is to raise his left hand, and if he doesn't, he is to raise his right. Something to that effect. So it means that the supervisors know all these pretensions, yet do nothing about them. They also pretend that they don't know all the pretensions made by the public schools they are to visit. The oppression of the lower working classes in the story are the teachers, which was evidently shown when they were invited to the school's principal's house to make a special salad stuffed a chicken, or clean the silverware. Others are asked to do all the painting and repair work on the principal's house and all that. During dinner, when there was some kind of party or entertainment, the pretty instructors were presented to each the supervisors for dance, which made them like a prostitute. Whatever the principal orders, the teacher would follow. The teachers who exerted much effort for this receive a deduction from their pay envelopes to pay all the expenses of the event's preparation. A teacher should be the one who teaches, who educates. He, she is responsible of the eruditions and even for the future of everyone of tomorrow's best doctors, lawyers, politicians. But the story tells the other way around. What matters is not how well one teaches, but how well one has learned the art of pleasing the powers. Mr. Ampil had been 30 years in the service. Never a day absent, never a day late, never told a lie but he hadn't reached 65 and wasn't going to get a cent he wasn't working for. Those who do good, who do what is supposed to be done, are those who are receiving less, who are being disliked. Miss Noel was being reminded constantly to give up teaching, to be able to lie in a hammock, on the top of the hill and not have to worry about the next lesson plan.